Hello everyone, today we're going to recursively find the minimum and maximum values in a binary search tree. So let's get started. So a binary search tree is a binary tree in which every node A is greater than all the values in its left subtree and less than all the values in its right subtree. So looking at our root node 80, all the values to the left of 80 are going to be smaller than 80, and all the values to the right of 80 are going to be larger than 80. And that applies to every single node in our binary search tree, where all the values to the left of that node are smaller than that node, and all the values to the right of that node are larger than that node. Now, what does it mean to be the node with minimum value in a binary search tree? So what do we know? We know that everything to the left of a given node is smaller than that node. So if we keep approaching to the left, we'll eventually find the smallest node in our binary search tree, which in this case is going to be 10. Now to find the minimum node, we're going to have to work with some sort of tree class. So here I'm going to work with a tree node class that will represent my entire binary tree. However, there are multiple ways you can do this. You can have a tree node class, and a binary tree class as two separate classes, or you can have a tree node class as an inner class to a binary tree. So let's go over our tree node class. Here we have three instance variables. We have our data, which will be associated with every single node in our binary search tree, and we have our left and right reference variables, so it'll be the left and right subtrees respectively in our binary search tree. We also have a constructor that'll take in some arguments data that'll be used to initialize our instance variable data with. Now let's move on to our find min method. So in this method, we're going to recursively call find min on our current node's left subtree until the point where our left is equal to null. Because at that point, we know we found the minimum value in our binary search tree. So let's go through it. Starting from our root node 80, the first thing we do is check if our left is not equal to null. In this case, our left is not equal to null. So we'll call find min on our 80's left subtree. Now, we're back at the start of our find min method. So again, we check if our left is not equal to null. Well, the left of 40 is not equal to null, so we'll call find min on its left subtree. And again, we check if our left is not equal to null, and since our left is not equal to null, we'll again call find min on 20's left subtree. And again, we check if our left is not equal to null. Well, our left is equal to null, so what we'll do is return a copy of the reference to our node with value 10 back to the method that called it, which in this case is left.findmin. Then, that value is returned back to the method that called it, and so on, and so forth. Until we finally get the copy of the reference to our node with value 10. Now, let's look at the maximum value in a binary search tree. So we know that everything larger than a given node is going to be in that node's right subtree. So if we keep approaching to the right, we'll eventually get to the node with maximum value, which in this case is a node with data 150. Now let's take a look at our find max method. So this method is very similar to our find min method. However, instead of approaching the left, we approach the right. So let's go through it. So the first thing we want to do is check if our right is not equal to null. In this case, 80's right is not equal to null. So we'll call find max on 80's right subtree. Then, going back to the start of our method, we check if our current node's right is not equal to null. And since 120's right is not equal to null, we'll call find max on 120's right subtree. Then going back to the start of our method, we'll check if our right is not equal to null again. Now our right is not equal to null, so we'll call find max on 140's right subtree. Now again, we check if our right is not equal to null. However, in this case, our right is equal to null. So what we'll do is return a copy of the reference to our node with value 150 back to the method that called it, which in this case is right.findmax. Then that value is returned back to the method that called it and so on and so forth. Until we finally get our copy of our reference to our node with value 150, and we're done. Now let's look at the complexity analysis for our min and max methods. Now our big O will be in terms of h, since we're traversing the height of the tree, and not necessarily the number of nodes in the tree. Now in the worst case, we can have a degenerate tree, where the height is actually equal to the number of nodes in the tree, such as a left skewed or right skewed binary search tree. However, using h is a more strict upper bound since we're concerned about the height of the tree. So for our find min and find max methods, our big O is going to be a big O of h, where h is the height of the tree. Now moving on to our space complexity, our big O is also going to be in terms of h, since we're traversing the height of the tree, and the number of activation records or stack frames in our call stack pertaining to our find min and find max methods are going to be based on the height. If you enjoyed this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. See you in the next video.